Islam's greatest apologist, Zakir Naik, declares, If you want to prove the Quran wrong, only thing you have to do is take out a single contradiction in the Quran. Challenge accepted. Surah 4, 82 reads, Then do they not reflect upon the Quran. If it had been from any other than Allah, they would have found within it much contradiction. Well, the Quran is filled with contradictions of various kinds. Scientific, historical, moral, and so on. You go on the internet, you will find a thousand contradictions. True. But it turns out we don't have to go any further than the verse itself to prove it. But first, I want to point out how ridiculous the verse is right on the surface. Imagine critics making fun of someone claiming to have received divine revelation. In response, the prophet says, I just received a new revelation. Allah says if my revelation was fake, you would find a bunch of errors in it. So there, my revelation is real. This just smacks of what a cult leader would do. And apparently Allah isn't even very confident, because he requires much contradiction to disprove his claim, not just a little. Does that sound like something an all-knowing God would say? Returning to the verse, we have a conditional statement, if P, then Q. A conditional statement is false if the conclusion Q can be false while the premise P is true. In this case, we have the premise, Quran is not from Allah, and the conclusion, they would have found much error. Let's give it some labels and say if not A, then E. If the not from Allah language is confusing, we can also look at what's called the contrapositive, a logically equivalent statement. In this case, that would be, if no error is found, then it is from Allah. So, to prove the verse false, we need to show something that is free of error, but doesn't come from Allah. This is incredibly easy to do. Take, for instance, the following set of propositions. Water freezes at zero degrees Celsius under normal atmospheric pressure. George Washington was the first president of the United States. Muslims believe Muhammad was a true prophet. The square root of four is two. Christianity is the most popular religion in the world, with an estimated 2.3 billion adherents. A list produced by me and completely free of contradiction or error. So unless you want to say I got revelation from Allah, in which case, let me add, Islam is false to my list, the conditional statement of Surah 482 is false. If you think it's not from God, you want to prove it wrong? Try it. Take out a single contradiction, the Quran will be proved wrong. Now, the Muslim might say something like, the verse refers only to the Quran, so it's still true. This is called the fallacy of special pleading. Admitting a position is usually false, but claiming it is true in one specific case without giving an adequate explanation as to why. The Quran is clearly, at minimum, a set of statements about the world. So if Muslims want to avoid special pleading, they need some reason why the Quran is different from other sets of factual statements. Perhaps someone will say my list is short while the Quran is long. That is true, but I could extend my list indefinitely simply by adding more basic math or other facts to the list. Likewise, a standard textbook on just about any subject is going to be much longer than the Quran, and the average person won't be able to find any contradiction in it, let alone much. So that option's out. A popular reply is to say, the Quran claims to be from Allah, but I can simply add that to my list and there still won't be any contradiction. After all, can you prove Allah didn't send this to me in a dream last night? Another attempt is to say the Quran contains a knowledge of the spiritual world. This one's a double fail. First, the verse says the heirs can be found by the unbelievers listening to it. Spiritual propositions are obviously untestable, so it cannot possibly be what the Quran intends. Second, I can add propositions like heaven and hell are real, or demons can cause human suffering, to my list, and it too will contain statements about the spiritual world while still being free of contradiction. 
Yet others may claim the Quran is special because it is sacred to millions of Muslims. Well, that obviously wasn't true when the words were first revealed. So unless you want to claim it was false when it was first spoken, you better drop that idea. Likewise, Bible verses like John 3.16 are sacred to millions of Christians, but obviously contain no contradiction by themselves. One might say the Quran was revealed in Arabic and is the main basis for that language. So what? The truth of an idea is not dependent on the language it is written in. There is nothing special about Arabic that makes it impossible for humans to say true things while using it. If there was, it couldn't function as a language at all. Finally, in desperation, the Muslim may fall back on, yeah, but the Bible makes similar claims. This does absolutely nothing to remove the Quran's air, but let's take a look anyway. And if you say in your heart, how may we know the word that the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the word does not come to pass or come true, that is a word the Lord has not spoken. At first glance, it may seem similar, but closer examination shows it to be quite different than the Quran's claim. Remember, the Quran's argument is, if not from Allah, then much air. The Bible's argument is, if air, then not from God. These statements are not at all equivalent. Any more than the statements, if I have a son, I am a father, and if I am a father, I have a son. The first is obviously true, while the latter is obviously false, since I may have only daughters and still be a father. For the Bible to be false, one would have to show that God can speak false prophecies. Good luck with that one. The biblical statement can only be used to discredit a claimed prophet. That wasn't good enough for Allah. So he reversed it to try to make it proof of his, I mean Muhammad's, prophethood. In the process, he made a basic logic error. I don't know about you, but I'll go with the God who understands logic, not the one who butchers it. And remember, if you want to prove the Quran wrong, only thing you have to do is take out a single contradiction in the Quran. Thanks for watching.